Good morning, everybody. Ricardo Wilkins here. Nash is getting coffee, but he's here as well. <laughs> and uh, we are here for Q for Teams. Uh, champions using Teams effectively, office hours, and here to geek out on some teams today. So hopefully you came with some questions. Uh, when Nash comes back, so last week, uh, Stacy uh, was flying solo with you. I think may have talked about uh, the Power BI stuff. And um, and even if not, uh, Nash wanted to uh, kind of go through a little bit of that and uh, talk about some Power, Power BI integration in Teams, what the licensing requirements look like, things like that. Um, but before we jump into any of that, you know, again, if you came with a with a burning question, put it in chat or come off mute. Uh, we're here for you. So uh, let us know. But if not Nash, I was just letting them know about, you know, the, the Power BI piece there. Um, that we wanted to clarify and even demo today. So it doesn't look like any burning questions. Uh, chat or anything. I do have a burning question. I'm oh. sorry. This is uh, Lori. We're getting ready to enable a meeting expiration policy, changing the default date from 60 down to 30. And, and Kim, I know you're on as well. What is the best way to ask this question? What is going to happen to all of the recordings that are going to be in that 31 to 59 date range. I think that's the best way. Uh, yeah, Lori, I mean, you know, we turned the policy on two months ago. All these recordings are out there with the 60 day expiration date. We're changing it to 30. We're like, if we change it to 30, are all those <laughs> recordings from 60 days deleting? No, like, it, okay. the, the policy change will only affect newly created recordings after you make the policy change. We were hoping that was the case. <laughs> right. um, so just like when the feature first rolled out, it didn't go and tag all of your existing recordings. So I'm I'm curious. I I actually see most people going the I opposite direction that. of making either either extending it out to like six months or a year, or actually completely turning it off. Um, what's what's driving you guys to go and and shorten the time frame for deletion? One word: legal. <clears throat> Okay. Our legal department is driving this. Okay. Um, just Although, you know. let me ask you this. So, you know, it's in OneDrive, goes to the recycle bin, that's another 30 days. And then there's that secondary recycle bin in OneDrive. Do these recordings go to that secondary recycle bin too? They're just like any other OneDrive or SharePoint file. Yeah, and I think those are set to 90. So even though we're saying it's a 30 day expiration, I think in theory, I think truthfully, it's got a 210 if you know where to dig it up. Yep. So, so um, you know, just just a word of advice. Um, make sure your legal team is aware that that while this might be beneficial to them in one scenario, it will probably have a lot of other impacts on the organization that are negative. So, um, you may end up with folks who have accessibility accommodations for memory issues, whether it's from head trauma or anything else, uh, who might file Section 508. Uh, accommodation requests or complaints because they don't have access to recordings anymore. Um, you might have folks who are out on maternity or paternity leave um, have some complaints about the fact that, you know, the a, a thing that would help them with that scenario is being taken away. Um, so just, I, I know it's hard when those decisions are made, oftentimes without the, the folks who are closest to the understanding of how the tool is actually used in the organization in the room that the one narrow interest um, absent all of the understanding of how it's used getting added to the scale it's like oh there's a tiny benefit here great let's do it whereas if the entire understanding of how it will impact in the organization was present in the calculus it might actually be hey no we're we're going to go a, a different way so um, i agree yeah i mean you know Lori and I are not privy to those conversations, so it's definitely above our pay grade. But um, in, to that point with transcription, we are looking to turn on transcription in our environment, and I'm noticing that those are not stored in OneDrive. It's stored in Exchange Online somewhere. 
Correct. Um, we did validate that we can do e-discovery on those, but um, how do you how do you get to those transcription files? I mean, I know you can download them and everything, but outside of the meeting artifacts, how do you get to those transcription files? If I uh, want to save them, not you know, aside from the downloading. To today, uh, my knowledge is you really don't. Um, in the future, they should support uh, the more robust features that you're used to out of everything in the Exchange mailbox. But um, let me quick find the documentation today. But today, yeah, and when we expire those after 30 days, does that mean I can't download them from the meeting artifacts anymore? Uh, Ricardo, help me. Um, my understanding is that the meeting recording and the meeting transcript are two unrelated things. The meeting recording expiration is not the same as doing anything to the, the transcript. It would have been my understanding as well. And that that recording is simply just deleted. Um, so uh, yeah, it should be gone from access from the meeting uh, assets. The transcription as well. No, the, the transcription is a different thing. So the meeting recording being purged does not purge the transcript. To my knowledge, Wait, I could be wrong. The, set, the timeline on the transcription. Uh, to my I'm knowledge, we don't have a, a, an option for that today. Kim, did you have a question for me? I was multitasking. Oh, I'm guilty. Oh, no, I, just, I thought you were going to change the policy on transcription. Nope, not yet. So we think that we can change it, but you're saying that we can't change it. So. For transcription, according to the documentation, um, Transcription does not support retention policies, e-discovery, or legal hold today. Um, the life cycle of the meeting transcript will depend on manual management by the meeting organizer. So if you want to delete a transcript, the meeting organizer has to go delete the transcript today. This is very good information. Thank you so much. So, and I, I threw the link in chat, um, and it's those first two bullet points. The first one explaining that it's stored in the organizer's exchange online account. Um, and then it can be accessed through the recording transcripts tab. The second one explaining that the initial release does not support retention policies, e-discovery, or legal hold. Thank you so much. This is great. You're welcome. The other thing I was hearing in that too, uh, sounds like if you were looking for this policy to, to clean up all your old recordings, then it's not going to do that. Hopefully that, that's clear as well, right? Well, so the only people that have those are like this few of us that, you know, have been testing this for months and months and months. So, yeah, I've noticed my old recordings are still out there and, you know, I I'm not saying anything. to. <laughs> <laughs> so. And as soon as you move the recording out of OneDrive, it lives forever. So, you know, it's. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's the other piece of this, too. Oh, yeah. OneDrive and SharePoint files, you know, if you've got some kind of. Uh, retention policies on anything, you know, those are still affecting wow. effect. This this new policy isn't, yep. you know, going to kill any of that. So there there are certainly some recordings that can still live forever, even with this policy in effect, depending on what other yeah. settings you got going on. Our users are all about, you know, everybody could record in Skype and Skype recordings live forever. And so, <laughs> I, you know, legal found that out and they didn't like it. And so they, you know, decided they're yeah. No, that's we're not going to do it this time. So we did not turn on recording for everybody in our organization. It is a request only. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, I just anything you can do to get into the room with those folks because there are probably other ways to address their concerns, um, and that that does have a pretty negative impact on the employee experience. Not being able to record by default. Think of every team leader who holds a team meeting. Where now you literally have to be present. Can't be present. Oh, you know? Yeah. That's, you're that's hearing all. this. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to tell you one of my tricks is, you know, to have that SharePoint site that documents all of our governance for the employees. So, yeah, you might send an email or some sort of message out, but the place where the current information is a SharePoint site. And on every one of those bullet points, not, not only explain what the governance is, but a sentence or two on why the governance is that way, and most importantly, the contact information of the person who made that decision. So that you don't have to spend your cycles explaining it. You don't have yeah. to spend your time dealing with the complaints. The complaints go to the person who, who made the decision. So yeah. yeah, number one, and and 
you know, this is when, when the decision comes back of, well, you might do something wrong with it. Yeah, document that. This team believes that employees may misuse this feature. Because of that, no one is allowed to use this feature. Okay, that, that's a, a decision they get to make. Let's document that that's the decision they made and make sure that the folks impacted by it have the contact information of the decider. Um, otherwise, these things get decided and two years later, after all of the pain has been there, no one knows who decided or why. And, yeah. and that's a really hard thing to change because everyone imagines that someone might have had a really good reason. And it might have been the best reason at the time, but if we didn't document it um, and we we didn't put that out there publicly, um, it's really hard to go back and change it. Put yeah, it on a SharePoint yeah. site, explain you. this is what the restriction is. You can't record meetings. All of the training that you see from Microsoft, every blog post, every built-in help article says you can, but here you can't. Here's why you can't, and here's who made that decision, including their email address. No, I like that idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, and that might kind of dovetail with with uh, Glenn's question. Glenn, do you want to come off mute and ask your question? Uh, yes, our um, SharePoint administration unit is a small, hardworking group, and they have been tasked with migrating all our old SharePoint sites from 2007 to 13. 2013, 2016, into the new 365, and they just said, we're busy, don't talk to us about Power BI. You know, this is something we can do when we finished all the migrations, which is reasonable. So, but I was just asking, you know, until we get to that point, until we get Power BI, are there any other um, anal ways we can run analytics um, before having that turned on? Like, I guess I'm curious why one had anything to do with the other. Oh, like well, Power BI, you certainly can publish a Power BI report to a SharePoint page, but like that's not Power BI. Um, I don't understand what I, I'm curious what the uh, how not having access to Power BI helps the SharePoint team at all. Oh, uh, I, I don't know, but what we've done is We've created a couple of uh, two or three minute training videos in SharePoint and we've posted some uh, web links and some information on Teams. And so our boss was saying, um, we hear good things back from people. Oh yeah, we really enjoyed that, that was helpful. But what are the numbers? You know, are people really, uh, how many people are accessing it and viewing it? So we went to the SharePoint admin team and they said, can't help you right now. Talk to us later. Uh, Does we'll the SharePoint team own teams in your organization? Um, kind. Well, kind, it's a gray area. Okay. <laughs> kind of, but not really. <laughs> so, so Glenn, the data exists and can be consumed through Power BI and has nothing to do with SharePoint directly. So, like the SharePoint team in general, shouldn't have to do any work here. Um, in order to get the analytics data, uh -huh. you need a Teams admin to click one button. Okay. That says turn on and start collecting analytics. Um, and uh, if I can, Ricardo, redirect you to the, the uh, M365 admin center. You know what? I misspoke. Not a Teams admin. You need a global admin to do this. Um, a global admin would need to go and turn on analytics for the M365 tenant. Um, and we do that at the, the M365 Admin Center, org settings, or even even just uh, reporting. Uh, so, so go to, yeah, no, go to org settings. We'll do this the right way. Um, and down there is something like uh, usage, what's it called? Um, reports. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there's a checkbox for... Uh, M365 usage analytics. And so typically you would want to uncheck that first one that can, you know, hides the user data unless you live in um, uh, uh, typically Germany uh, where they've got the workers councils where for whatever reason employers can't see this data. Um, so uncheck the first one, check the second one. Um, then the data is going to start being collected. Um, 
And anybody who has the reports reader role will be able to go and start looking at the data using Power BI Desktop. Um, I guess let me also ask, because I'm wondering if, if this is a question of we put some content in SharePoint and we kind of want to know what if people are hitting a few pages and whatnot, like the, the basic SharePoint usage analytics, or are we talking all of the, I think what we were just talking about before was all of M365, what who's doing stuff in Exchange and SharePoint and Teams, just trying to get a feel for where, where the question was heading. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really know because I'm not fami that familiar with it. Uh, what I do know is that, um, you know, uh, I'm an IT trainer. I deal with the training, and one of a member of our team who is actually a coding programmer, um, you know, <clears throat> contacted the uh, uh, SharePoint admin team about Power BI, and they said, "Sorry, can't help you now." Um, so that's where, I, you know, our our boss is asking for reports. Uh, how many people are actually accessing? the information that we're putting out there for them. Great. That's a slightly different question where I was going. I, I assumed you were talking about hey, if we're doing training on Teams or OneDrive, are we seeing people actually go and use Teams and OneDrive the way we train them to do it? Um, if you just want to see who accessed the thing you published in SharePoint, you can just use native SharePoint reporting pieces without going to Power BI. Oh, OK, thank you. So that's what I'm showing here. Um, uh, whether it be a page or the site overall, you get some basic analytics about, you know, basically hits. And that, that's kind of what it sounds like. Your question is, did, did people even hit this page? Um, and so that's what this is attempting to show. Now, this is a demo environment. It doesn't have a lot of users doing a lot of stuff, so it's not very interesting looking. But you can see page views and average time spent on the page and all that good stuff. And that's with no, I mean, there shouldn't be any effort you know, actual effort needed there. I think I might might need to be a site owner for this to see this button, but that's about it. Um, and that's per page. And then I think the same for uh, the, the old site overall. I think that may be in uh, yeah, site per no oh, site usage. Uh, site usage not too far. Same for yeah, the site in general, overall traffic and things like that. Because we we have a um, a tool that counts the hits on our intranet, but you know it doesn't work for SharePoint or Teams. So. Yeah, I don't know if this looks like you know what you need. If it's if it's just you know hit counts, I think that's right. kind of that's where this analytics page is really trying to to get you to. Uh, I will say now this would take a little bit of effort, but uh, I know I've uh, been in some scenarios where I really do want to track how, how people are consuming, especially training content, creating a, a, a Microsoft form uh, quickly, embedding that next to the content and, and kind of uh, maybe on an honor system, you know, having people hit the button that says, you know, completed this would be another way to track um, if the basic hit analytics wasn't getting it for you. That would, that would be the end user saying, yes, I have done this. Um, so that could be another approach to get that kind of information. Okay, thank you. This actually uh, a little SharePoint history here, but the, this is actually a lot nicer than it used to be. SharePoint used to be, uh, uh, you know, bemoaned for its analytics, and you know, it was always a common thing to go get a third party for even the most basic, even you know, page hits. So as an old school SharePoint person, I'm happy to see that at least some basic analytics are there with you know one or two clicks, whereas before it was a nightmare. I, I remember the days of putting little, what was it like Google or some little script in every page that I wanted to <laughs> capture some, some analytics on, and that was just a nightmare. So I can totally appreciate this. Um, but yeah, and I think uh, so. Um, uh, Nash is putting it in the chat, and let me uh, put it here. But yes, while while it may not have been part of 
your particular need, but we also did talk about the M365 usage, usage analytics overall. Don't think in this demo environment I have that ready to show, but that there, there are ways to see all the usage data going on across the tenant uses Power BI, uh, really drills in, you know, how many people are using OneDrive, how much content, how many emails are being sent, all that good stuff. Um, so, so you have that as well. Um, if you're really trying to dive into some use into some usage uh, scenarios, I wonder if to see. Oh, I, I was hoping to add a, at least a screenshot. Not something I can easily blow up, but give you a little quick snippet of kind of what that looks like. This is the executive summary. So, just at a high level, what's the adoption? What are, what have people been doing the last thirty days? And you know, what percentage of our storage is used up and those kind of things. <laughs> what platform, how many people are on their phones versus the browsers and blah, blah, blah. So it's good stuff in there. Um, again, the, your global admin can enable that. Good stuff. Um, were, was anybody here present last week when I think both Ricardo and I were gone. It was just Stacy. Yes. Um, I know she was talking about Power BI and Teams last week. Do you know if she showed the Teams analytics stuff through the Power BI app? Uh, yeah, some of it, but, um, you know, because I didn't have a chance to use it, I kind of forgot it. But uh, it it was definitely looked good and looked like more than we need right now. But at some point, it it will be good to have all that stuff. Huh. I think we did want to clarify. Maybe she did already, but the the, the licensing requirements for that, uh, the premium versus pro and all that. Did she talk through that last week? I'm not sure. I um, I can't remember. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, maybe we just quick show what most people should be able to do with the free license, um, and that's get to your personal Teams analytics. If you want to go and build custom reports and share them, the sharing piece that that does require a Power BI Pro license or access to Power BI Premium capacity. Unless you're on E5, not everybody owns that. Um, but he, we're going to have Ricardo just go through this from scratch since he hasn't set it up before. He's going to go into Teams and hit that dot, 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 and just bring up the Power BI personal app in Teams. He's going to click that there, and he's just going to hit Add, and it'll show up in the left rail. Do me a favor and just right-click and pin it for now so that we can come back to it. Um, and then he's going to hit New Report. And on the right, it says analyze your Teams data. This is going to give you some personal insights into how you use Teams. So he clicks that, and it's going to start loading. And it's going to start giving him a bunch of metrics on the number of meetings, number of posts, chat messages, calls, all that kind of stuff. Um, now he won't be able, like anyone can do this if they've got the Power BI free license. You don't need a, a paid one or an add-on for for E3. Um, bring it here, sweetie. Um, you just can't share it. Again, demo. This is not going to be super interesting. I'm ah, can I oh, of course, I probably broke it at this point. Uh, so yeah, with this being a demo environment, I think uh, broke some things here. Try it again. Let's try that one more time. Aha. Just needed a little bit of time. Still not the yeah, most it's, exciting it's data. The day. it, it, I think it took like two minutes in my, my uh, demo tenant, so. So this may still actually be trying to get things together. But short of the, you know, whatever process is going on in the background, that the steps to get this going were relatively simple, hopefully. Yeah, that's, that's how about I take over and share real quick, just since yeah. so we can play the baking show game. 
Right. Right. Um, we'll stick it in the oven. Right, do the voice and everything. Uh, <laughs> so I did this this yesterday. So I see this team's activity analytics report that got created. Um, and I can go and see, you know, this is my, my little demo thing. So it hasn't actually done that much, but I can start seeing all of my personal activity of like how I interact with other people and then have it all, you know, globally, but then also the breakdown like per team, right? Um, the teams that I'm an owner of, here's the metrics of them. How active are they? How inactive are they? Um, and we can dry, dive into the details of that stuff too. So if I pick an individual team that I'm an owner of, I can see all the details of how that thing is used and a nice little activity summary. Um, I love this because it helps me better understand my personal productivity. Um, additionally, it gives me a lot of ideas about how I might structure this sort of stuff for any sort of reporting, right? Um, so it's a really good example of, of how to take a data set and help it empower somebody to go and you know, understand their, their, their activity. Any questions on this thing? Um, and I was going to put a link in chat. Uh, Teams activity. I don't know what I did with that link, uh, but I will find it and share it real quick. Um, Power BI in Teams with a little search. Um, analyze Teams usage in Teams. Uh, there we go. So there's the link to the, the documentation for that one with the screenshot with more data than I had. I will be right back. We are pretty much uh, at time here, actually. Um, any uh, last thoughts, questions, comments this week? This was great. Very helpful. Thank you. As always, thank you. Yeah, I cannot thank you enough for doing these. These are so valuable and we really appreciate them. Awesome. That's what we're here for. Yeah, and I don't want to be selfish. I just hope that nobody else knows about these because I liked having you guys all to myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually just forwarded this, Lori, to um, Rebecca and Sky. They work in another, um, in another tenant. Um, but I think they would find some value in this too. So. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's kept secret, right? <laughs> it is All right. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great All right. day. All right. Yeah, because in some of the Microsoft webinars, they're basically top down live events. And as an attendee, you can't really interact. And this is a yeah. great opportunity to interact. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly, Glenn. Yeah. And especially if the numbers stay this this way, we can certainly keep this going. We could probably do it even if we blew up and you know got big with the controls that we have in place. But yeah, I, I agree. I like the interactivity. So.